You are listening to Worth Electronics What's Up Radio Podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts, as well as our very own Worth Electronic technical specialists. And they're going to be shining a light on some interesting topics, like energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute at your desk or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics What's Up podcast. Today we're talking about EMI filtering and the issues that arise from that that are ever present in your electronics. Now, EMI is electromagnetic magnetic interference. It's that unwanted noise or interference in an electrical circuit, and it's caused by an electromagnetic field, EMF. EMI can be radiated from sources such as radio transmitters, or they can be conducted through wires or cables due to the flow of electrical current. It can cause noise or operational errors. It affects the performance of electronic devices, and it can potentially lead to some operational issues. So understanding and addressing EMI is crucial for ensuring the safety and the functionality of electronic devices. So where does EMI originate? Well, EMI can come from natural sources like the lighting and the solar storms, as well as from human-made sources such as power lines, radio transmitters, as well as household appliances. EMI can travel through wires, disrupt sensitive electronic components, and it can spread through the air as electromagnetic waves. Internally, EMI can be generated by switching circuits, motors, transformers, and high-speed data lines. These sources create high-frequency noise that can actually interfere with other circuits, leading to data distortion, malfunctions, and it can even damage the components. EMI can be either conducted or radiated. Now, radiated EMI occurs when the electrical paths on the circuit board cover large areas, creating loop antennas or dipoles that propagate the signal. This noise, which ranges from 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, can actually come from both inside and outside sources. Conducted EMI, on the other hand, that comes from the imbalances in circuits or unwanted elements in the circuit. This type can magnetically or electrically connect to other parts of the circuit. Unwanted currents or voltages can travel through the wires or the cables because of common mode or differential mode noise. Both types of EMI can impact signal quality, leading to distorted data, malfunctions, and even damage to components. Inside the equipment, switching circuits create high-frequency transients that can radiate or couple conductivity. While motors and transformers can actually generate both conducted and radiated EMI due to the interaction of magnetic fields within their windings. High-speed clocks and data lines also generate high-frequency energy, potentially interfering with other circuits. So why are these EMI filters needed? Well, EMI filters are very crucial for reducing the electromagnetic noise in those electronic devices. These filters help ensure devices actually meet electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, standards and operate smoothly by blocking unwanted frequencies while allowing desired signals to pass through. So here are some of the benefits of EMI filters. First, it reduces EMI. It enhances device performance and reliability by minimizing noise. It also ensures EMC compliance and it helps devices meet regulatory requirements. It protects sensitive equipment and safeguards critical applications from electromagnetic disturbances. And it extends the device longevity because it helps reduce stress and wear on components. EMI filters also improve communication quality because it enhances data transmission by reducing interference and it promotes safety, which contributes to a safer environment for electronic devices. Now, the typical setup of a DC input filter for a DC to DC switching controller can be seen in our first image. An LC filter is used to minimize differential mode interference to prevent noise from entering the device from the power supply and also vice versa. 
With a well-designed input filter and carefully chosen components, you can achieve the highest possible insertion loss while maintaining the stability of the switching controller. EMI filters provide the desired insertion loss or attenuation at a desired frequency by providing high impedance over a wide range of frequencies. Selecting the right EMI filters early in the design process can actually effectively manage this noise. So what are the different types of EMI filters? Well, EMI filters come in various types and configurations, and they can be passive or active. Now, active filters generate electricity to counteract EMI by detecting voltage input and creating an opposing current. Passive filters absorb unwanted energy using components such as capacitors, resistors, transformers, and inductors. EMI filters come in different types such as low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject, and the list continues. Now, each type is designed to block specific ranges of frequencies to actually reduce unwanted noise. And they can be set up in various ways to achieve different levels of noise suppression. The more common designs include LC, CL, PI, and T filter forms, as well as a lot more complex architectures. And we can actually see this in our next figure. These filters are carefully adjusted to resonate at a particular frequency or a range of frequencies to block unwanted noise. A ferrite choke is a passive EMI filter, a capacitance-based inductor that actually suppresses high-frequency signals around a power line, providing low-pass filtration for common mode or differential mode conducted EMI. Other different types of EMI filters can include power line filters or PLFs, and they target conducted EMI on power lines. There's also signal line filters, and they address conducted and radiated EMI on signal lines. High frequency HF filters attenuate EMI at high frequencies. Feed through capacitors, which filter low frequency conducted EMI. And common mode filters, which target common mode noise on differential signal pairs. So what factors do you need to consider when choosing an EMI filter? Well, here are some of these factors, frequency range and interference levels. Identify the specific frequencies and the levels of interference to address. There's also filter type. You need to select a filter that effectively suppresses the identified EMI. You also need to consider environmental conditions. Ensure that the filter performs well under these expected conditions such as temperature and humidity. Also look at your mounting options. Choose a mounting method that is compatible with your PCB layout and production process. And finally, system compatibility. Verify that the filter works well with your system's connections, cables, and power supply. To help with this, the Red Expert Filter Designer is actually a tool for designing input filters in DC to DC converters, AC to DC converters, as well as output filters best part, it is completely free. It simplifies the process of designing differential mode input filters or noise filters by calculating components based on input parameters. This tool uses non-ideal component models, including parasitics, to determine filter performance. By using the correct input parameters, the tool reduces the time and cost of EMC compliance. You can also check out Worth Electronics Design Kit for EMC filtering. This design kit offers a quick and cost-effective way to build filter designs using various components. Now, initially, we do recommend using the Red Expert Filter Designer for the calculations. This tool simplifies the process of designing differential mode input filters or noise filters by calculating components based on input parameters. And by utilizing non-ideal component models, including parasitics, it accurately determines filter performance and reduces the time and cost of EMC compliance. After completing the initial calculations with Red Expert, you can directly transition to creating prototypes using our physical design kit. This approach enables the verification of the filter circuit's behavior regarding the desired filtering effect and the integration of the selected filter circuit into your application. Consequently, this method helps you to minimize development times as well as associated costs. 
In conclusion, electromagnetic interference, EMI, this is unwanted noise or interference in electrical circuit caused by an electromagnetic field, EMF. EMI can come from natural sources like lighting and solar storms, as well as human-made sources such as power lines, radio transmitters, and household appliances. EMI filters are very crucial for reducing electromagnetic noise in electronic devices. These filters help ensure devices meet electromagnetic compatibility and different standards and operate smoothly by blocking unwanted frequencies, all while allowing desired signals to pass through. When choosing an EMI filter, frequency range and interference levels, filter type, environmental conditions, mounting options, and system compatibility need to be considered. We invite you to learn more about the topic of EMI by visiting this technical article available at Element 14, which is an Avnet community. Simply click the link available in our description. You can also learn more about the topic of EMI by visiting all of our application notes available on the subject at Worth Electronic Online. While there, check out our entire lineup of EMC components, including ferrites for PCB and cable assembly, filter chokes, ESD and surge protection, EMC shielding, line filters, and so much more. Unfortunately, some podcast streaming services do not support video content, so if you want to see all of today's images from the presentation, simply check them out at www.we-online.com slash podcast. Just head right over to get the full visual experience. You are listening to Worth Electronics What's Up Radio Podcast, where each week we're seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronics specialists. We're going to shine a light on interesting topics such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute at your desk or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics What's Up Podcast.